What's up guys? Today we're going to be taking a look at some of the parts and tools that will be going into the new engine build. As you can see we've got quite a few boxes so let's get started. Alright guys, first up, got a cam. And I got this from a friend of mine, Greg. This is a F303 cam and uh, part of the reason I chose this is that uh, a lot of the uh, turbo guys uh, over the years have had really good results with the F303 cam. It's a uh, 226, 226 duration, uh, 512, 512 lift, and it's got a 114 lobe separation. Um, doesn't have a whole lot of overlap for the turbo. And uh, these cams are known for revving pretty, pretty good. Uh, should have good power all the way out to 6,000 RPM, especially with that uh, Edelbrock Performer RPM. Uh, intake. Uh, let's see what Summit Racing takes. Looks like we've got some King bearings. These are the SI series bearings. And looks like we've got our main bearings, main bearings and thrust bearing. You know, a lot of guys have a lot of good things to say about King bearings. So uh, these are 1010. Uh, 10 undersized bearing uh, since the crank has been cut 10, 10 thousandths. And we've got a set of the Total Seal Rings. Uh, they're uh, Classic Race series. These are standard bores since I'm just uh, honing the bores and uh, putting the stock pistons back in. These have a uh, molly top ring, a uh, ductile iron, so it should be good for the turbo setup. Uh, brass free slugs. Uh, i got piston ring installer. Uh, last thing I want to do is uh, break off a set of those rings. And uh, ARP uh, hardened uh, oil pump drive shaft. Uh, seen a lot of guys after rebuilding. In fact, a friend of mine, I think he went through, uh, after his rebuild, three uh, oil pump shafts twisted on him uh, and broke. So uh, definitely don't want to have any problems with oiling. So uh, hardened, input, uh, hardened oil pump drive shaft from ARP. Um, plenum gaskets uh, from Edelbrock for the Performer RPM. And uh, for melling, we've got a oil pickup tube. Let's take a look at that. Looks like an oil pickup tube. A little bit different from the OEM tube. Uh, let me see if I can grab that here. All right, yeah, looks like it has a little bit smaller opening than the OEM tube. Uh, but uh, knowing melling, I imagine there won't be any issues with that. It's still larger than the pickup tube diameter. And also with the oil pump pickup, um, new gasket. And 
this is part number 247S from Mellon. Oh, and on the uh, total seal, uh, we've got uh, CR64345. Uh, on those uh, classic race rings. Uh, the king bearings, um, looks like MB. 529 SI and then 0104 for the 10 under. And, uh, Edelbrock, for the Edelbrock gaskets. This is for the uh, for the older Performer RPM and uh, Performer intake manifold. It's uh, 3832 is the part number for that. Uh, and uh, yeah, unfortunately, Edelbrock's the only name, only game in town for for the uh, plenum gaskets. Uh, for ARP, uh, for the oil pump drive shaft, we've got uh, uh, 1547904 for the oil pump drive shaft. This fits 289 and 302s. Uh, 351 Windsors will use a little bit different one. And, uh, yeah, for the uh, brass free slugs, uh, it also has some nice. Mine already has them, I believe, uh, but the thread in uh, oil galley plugs. But yeah, brass. I've always been a uh, fan of the brass plugs. I'll paint the engine block, uh, but mask off these brass plugs because I really like the way the brass plugs look when you're looking at the engine. Uh, those are little details. Uh, but these are uh, MPE 108 BR. Oil pump. I decided to spend a little bit of extra money on the oil pump. Uh, this is a Melling uh, Select. This is the one of their uh, race pumps that they've got. Uh, 10687 is the part number. Oh, I got some stickers. Melling stickers. Always nice. So, oh, looks like it comes with its own hardened input shaft. That would have been nice to know. So looks like I may be sending the back that ARP shaft possibly? I don't know. We'll see. But uh, find out. It looks like it came with another an extra spring uh, and a few, few gaskets and what we got here? Relief valve spring instructions. So, old pump supplied with an optional pressure relief valve spring that will increase bypass pressure when installed. Idle pressure is not affected by spring changes. So, that's the relief valve spring that they include. So, supposedly, this is better pump, uh, better internals, uh, better tolerances than the standard M. 68 pump uh, that you would normally get for a standard rebuild. So I uh, felt the uh, extra power, uh, extra performance that I'm going to be going for be better to have a little bit better oiling, uh, especially with the turbo uh, bleeding, essentially bleeding oil off of the uh, off the oil feed. So it looks like we got uh, threaded plug. Oh yeah, this has a threaded plug instead of a pressed in plug uh, for uh, changing out or adjusting the, uh, the pressure. Well, right there. There's that uh, threaded in plug. Uh, so normally, normally on most standard pumps you would see a, uh, see if I've got my factory pump here still. Yeah, so as you can see here on the factory pump, they've just got a pressed in plug here. Uh, so you can't make changes or adjustments. So with this threaded in plug, you can make changes or adjustments to uh, the oil pressure uh, or install this uh, additional uh, spring.
All right, next up. Let's get, uh, got a uh, good old plastic gauge. Uh, I've got the red and the green plastic gauge. Uh, now, I am not going to be using primarily plastic gauge on assembling this engine. Uh, I will also be checking uh, clearances with a uh, bore indicator and a uh, and a micrometer on the uh, on the crank. So uh, this is just to uh, double check the readings that I'm getting, uh, make sure that uh, everything is kosher. And then I've got some uh, red and gray scuff pads. Um, clean up the bores just a little bit since uh, I've got a little bit of surface rust coming. Uh, showing up on those bores, so we get them cleaned up just a little bit, and uh, be good to go. All right, next up, uh, we got something from Amazon here, so let's see what we got. Checkered Flyer Performance. Oh, um, this is likely to be the. Is that tapered uh, tapered uh, spring compressor uh, so checkered flyer performance got this off of uh, Amazon and uh, probably the best deal I could find on one of these uh, uh, some of the other guys I found this on um, sloppy mechanics they they suggested this uh, and uh, said it was a good buy I had one of these on another engine I bought uh, or another engine I assembled and a uh, small block Chevy actually. Uh, these tapered uh, ring compressors, really, really, really nice. Uh, makes things go a whole lot quicker. Uh, like I said, I got this off of uh, Amazon. It's a, you can see a uh, standard four inch bore uh, since I'm not boring the engine using stock pistons. Alright, so next up we've got a Summit Racing uh, performance timing set. This is the uh, timing chain. And actually, this uh, picked this up a long, long time ago to build this engine uh, several years back. Uh, but uh, didn't end up assembling it uh, as I was moving around, uh, moved to Texas, moved back to California. But uh, while in Texas, I had a bit of a storage fire. Uh, lost all of the rings, bearings, gaskets, everything to, uh, to build this engine. Luckily, uh, the block and crank and um, stuff were in another storage unit. So those, those, those survived the fire. But uh, we've got a little bit of surface rust here. Uh, won't, be any kind of, won't be any problem. Uh, chain. Everything still looks really good. Uh, so it's got uh, settings for straight up, uh, advance, and retard. Although uh, I'll be installing it straight up, uh, dot to dot, as you would say. But I will be checking to make sure everything is correct. Uh, everything is lining up uh, with the degree wheel. Uh, this is a, a uh, Mr. Gasket degree wheel. I've got piston stops here. Uh, so we'll be checking to make sure everything is lining up and timing events are as they should be. So next up we've got a, another Summit Racing Box. Let's see what we've got here. Alright, looks like we've got another set of another set of bearings. Uh, these are likely to be yeah, these are the rod bearings. Uh, so it's uh, CR804SI and uh, 010 for the 10 under uh, cut that I've got on the crank. So again, these are the SI series rod bearings. They are aluminum bearings, uh, but a lot of people have had really good success with the King bearings. They come highly regarded. So. Um, Give these a shot. Hopefully they work out. I've got another another box from Amazon. Let's see what we got here. Ah.
intake manifold gaskets. Now for a lot of you that don't know, um, on uh, boosted applications, uh, a lot of these intake manifold gaskets, these are the uh, 1250 gaskets uh, for the smaller ports, uh, these gaskets have a really bad reputation of deforming around uh, the uh, uh, the ports, uh, water ports and uh, intake ports. A lot of times they'll they'll uh, deform and cross over or blow out. The this gasket, the 1250S3, is a steel core gasket, and uh, this eliminates. Uh, any problems that you have with this blowing out and uh, leaking coolant into the intake uh, and uh, a lot of times a lot of people think they'll have a blown head gasket but in fact they've just got a blown intake manifold gasket uh, but yeah so uh, blown applications uh, turbocharged applications uh, see a lot of boost um, these are the gasket to get now I don't know if they make a 1262 S3 um, but uh, my heads are ported uh, and fit this uh, 1250S3 gasket. So uh, I used these before. Uh, I don't... Ah, so these are the gaskets that came off the car. And uh, you know, as you can see, they, they are steel core. I don't know if... You, yeah, you kind of catch a little glimpse from the light. There's a little bit of a steel, steel core that goes through that gasket. But yeah, these... These were on the car for uh, a few years, probably not a whole lot of mileage, but yeah, as you can see, absolutely zero problems with any kind of blowout uh, from these gaskets. These things are great. You have a turbocharged or supercharged car, these are the gaskets for your intake uh, if you've got it for a 1250 size uh, gasket. A box here from Rock Auto. like a bunch of gaskets. Oh yeah. Gasket time. So what we've got here, uh, timing cover set. So this has got the uh, front seal around the crank. It's got uh, this front front seal for the oil pan, although what we've got down here is the uh, full rubber uh, and metal reinforced uh, oil pan gasket here. Uh, let's see, that is, uh, what is that part number there? Looks like OS34508R is the, yeah, the part number for that. Uh, this is the Felpro, um, really nice Felpro rubber gasket. So no more having to use these little cork pieces or rubber in seal here. Uh, this is a one piece oil pan gasket uh, with uh, metal reinforcement, really nice gasket. Uh, I am tired of oil leaks on the ground. So hopefully this engine won't have any problems with uh, oil leaks. So um, also with uh, being boosted um, builds a lot of crankcase pressure, so oil tries to come out every which way possible. So I'm hoping that with this, uh, we'll get that taken care of. Oh yeah, one well, other thing I meant to forgot to mention with these uh, 1250S3 gaskets, these uh, cord gaskets go along uh, the front and back of the uh, uh, of the engine block. Throw those out. Don't use those. Uh, I'll be using. Uh, we got here. Where did it go? So I'll either be using the Ultra Gray or I'm sure I've got it somewhere. Um, the right stuff. Let me see if I can find that. All right. So as I was saying, uh, do not use these uh, cork gaskets on the end. Uh, you will have oil leak problems. Stuff to use. Um, 
You use the right stuff here. This is the right stuff uh, black. They also make it in a gray version, which is essentially the same stuff here as the Permatex Ultra Gray as well. So um, I think the Ultra Gray is what I used the last time. I uh, didn't have any problems with any oil leaks. Uh, this is a, I believe, the gray is a little bit firmer setting uh, than the black, but the black is a little bit better with uh, with oil uh, oil leaks so or uh, in retaining oil I should say not oil leaks so uh, I might have to do a little bit of uh, a little bit of research or if you guys know uh, let me know in the comments which one is better uh, for that uh, that uh, ends of the intake manifold and block uh, gray or black So, and so that's timing cover set. Um, it's also got the uh, water pump gasket in there as well. Um, I did note that uh, it didn't come with the gasket that goes in between the plate and water pump. So there's a gasket that goes underneath this plate here, and that's what this gasket is for. So uh, this is Edelbrock uh, Victor Series water pump. Um, I don't run. Um, <laughs> heater core, heater core went out here in California. Don't really need the heater core. I don't drive the car enough to really worry about heat. Uh, so I am going to be blocking off one of these two ports here. I forget which one it is. Uh, when I get it assembled again, I'll figure out which port it is. But uh, I'll just be putting an MPT plug in one of these two ports here uh, to block it off, and the other one just goes to the intake. Uh, the thermostat bypass uh, so uh, that will help clean up some of the hoses I'll be uh, in the top of the manifold uh, there's the yeah it's too hard to get that out right now but there is the the two tubes that run along the top of the intake manifold uh, or the top of the lower intake manifold uh, to run back to the heater core. Um, up until this point, I've just had it looped around at the back. Uh, I really want to clean that up, so um, I'll be removing those. Um, one thing to note, you just can't remove it and leave it off. Uh, the uh, coolant temperature sensor uh, for the engine, the uh, ECT sensor, engine coolant temperature sensor, that is in the pipe that runs along the lower intake manifold. So. This is the pipe that I'm talking about here. Um, uh, right here is the engine coolant temperature sensor. This is the tube that comes from the water pump. Uh, there's also the other uh, other tube that comes from the uh, thermostat gas thermostat here. So right here. So you've got one here and the other one right here. So um, and back at the back, as you can see, I've just got this. Uh, Call it, um, yeah, it's just looped around um, just to bypass the heater core. So I'm going to do away with this to clean everything up, but this engine coolant temperature sensor needs to go in this port right here when you when you pull this apart. So it'll also, uh, I'll be getting rid of these uh, EGR um, coolant lines uh, that come on this, uh, that come off this rail too. Um, that'll help cool the intake charge since I'm not using EGR anymore. Uh, there's no real reason to keep these lines in place. It'll help keep the upper intake a little bit cooler. Uh, but yeah, so this engine coolant temperature sensor will need to go in here so we can accurately accurately read the engine coolant temperature sensor. If you get rid of this, uh, the engine will not be able to uh, compensate for uh, changes in engine coolant temperature uh, when it gets hot, when it gets cold. Um, in tuning, uh, you can use the engine coolant temperature, actually the, the factory uses the engine coolant temperature so so when it gets too hot it will retard the timing uh, to help uh, help prevent uh, detonation um, so push that back in here ah, here you can see I've got the 24 pound injectors currently this is the air charge temperature sensor which measures the air intake temperature uh, it does get a little bit heat soaked in that lower port. If you do want to move this, you need to make sure that you uh, 
make a change to the uh, tuning uh, via chip or quarter horse or if you're going to go to uh, standalone system you can you'll make those changes anyway but if you do move this you need to make sure you account for that uh, in your new location because the values that uh, this is going to be seeing is, as far as temperature wise are going to be different so it may not retard the timing uh, correctly uh, you, it may actually be far too late to retard the timing uh, when the engine air temperatures or intake air temperatures get too high. Uh, so as I said, uh, 42 pound injectors, um, Ford Racing 42 pound injectors, uh, these are far too small for what I'm going for along with the rails. I've got some um, aftermarket larger fuel rails to go with it uh, and I have uh, looking to be running 80 pound injectors haven't gotten those injectors yet, so I don't know exactly uh, which injectors I'm going to be running currently. So, um, but yes, yeah, so the plan is to run 80 pound injectors um, for E85. Uh, 42 pounds are these 42 pounds were already at the limit on gasoline uh, with the power level I was at. I'm going to be making more power than I was, so these are. Uh, far too small uh, for what I'm going to be doing. Uh, duty cycle will be too high. I think it was around 95% duty cycle with these injectors with the setup that I had previously, which uh, most tuners say that you really shouldn't be above uh, 80%. So I was definitely running into problems with that. Uh, so 80 pound injectors will be what we need for E85. Okay, back to the water pump. Uh, this is a uh, Edelbrock Victor series. This is the gasket that goes between the plate and the water pump. Head gaskets. I've had really good luck with the 933 uh, PT1s. Uh, they are a relatively low cost gasket. I believe these are about 15 bucks from Rock Auto. Um, if you're running a stock block, uh, there's really no need to be running any kind of comedics or anything like that. It's not necessary. Uh, also, uh, it's better to blow the head gasket than cause any extra damage that the comedic gaskets might be holding in. So I run this with ARP head studs. Uh, I was running 15 PSI on the supposedly thin deck GT40 irons. Everyone said, oh, you're going to be blowing head gaskets left and right. I blew one head gasket uh, with the blower. Um, probably two reasons. Uh, at that time, I was using factory torque to yield bolts still. And um, the guy that I had helping me did not follow the directions on the side that blew. Um, now granted those head gaskets were on the car for almost a hundred thousand miles so it was more than likely a tuning mistake I knew that it rattled a little bit so that it it had a small little fissure from one of these ports here over to uh, into the fire ring into the cylinder uh, it was pressurizing the coolant system just a hair um, I would eventually fill up the overflow tank and it would start pushing coolant out of the overflow tank, but it wasn't a major head gasket blow. And again, like I said, that was with torque to yield bolts that were incorrectly installed. Uh, so it lasted through nitrous, um, which actually on that same side, I melted the uh, ground strap off of all four uh, plugs when I uh, got a little bit greedy with the nitrous and ran out of fuel pump. So uh, on a 100 shot it was good, 125 shot ran out of fuel and melted off the ground strap on all four plugs on that same side. So fantastic gaskets. Um, I didn't have any problems with the turbo setup with these gaskets. Uh, a lot of people have really good luck with them. So like I said, 15 psi with the turbo, ARP head studs, these PT or 93. 933 PT1s are fantastic gaskets. And last out of this set is the rear main seal. Uh, this is the PTFE, the Teflon seal. Uh, it's BS40644. Uh, it comes with a install uh, ring.
something to assist in installation so you don't tear up that seal. So hopefully with this PTFE um, rear main seal, I won't have any problems with leaks. So, um, so Felpro does not recommend the use of a repair sleeve with this seal. So if you've got wear on your crank uh, from previous seals, if you've got a lip there that you can dig your finger into, this uh, PTFE seal is not for you. Um, also, it says that this seal must be installed dry. Do not lubricate the seal or the crankshaft when installing this. Uh, I believe uh, the reasoning for that is these have um, some kind of installation grease or something already on this uh, seal. So if you install it, uh, if you put oil or something on there, it won't seal seat correctly uh, when you start that engine up. Alright. We've got a few other parts here that I picked up. And let's see what we've got here. Alright. So this is an older piece, uh, but I use this is a HKS uh, boost controller. So in the past uh, on the Mustang, I was using a Turbonetics manual uh, waste gate or boost controller. Um, that uh, boost controller, uh, let's see here, as you can see right here, uh, this is the Turbonetics. It's just a uh, uh, air regulator. It's nothing special. You pull it out, turn it, lock it back in. Um, they're not great. Um, better performance can be had with uh, electronic boost controllers. Uh, one of the real big benefits here with electronic boost controllers is that they hold the wastegate shut until uh, your desired boost pressure. So um, with most uh, Manual boost controllers, um, a lot of times what will happen, or if you're just running on wastegate alone, that wastegate, as it sees pressure, it starts to creep open. Um, and what that does is that will slow your boost response. Now, for some people, that might be okay, especially if you're traction limited. That might be all right. But uh, in hopes of all the power that you can get, all the average power and torque that you can get, uh, the electronic boost controllers will... Uh, hold that wastegate closed until your desired boost pressure is met. Uh, I have this same, um, uh, I forget which version this is, uh, I think it might be the EVC4, I think. Um, but I have the same boost controller on my XR4Ti. I've had it on there for several years now, and uh, I've been nothing but happy with it. It's got uh, um, off which is just your wastegate pressure, uh, low boost and high boost. Uh, so this is the uh, solenoid that uh, you've got your um, manifold vacuum, you've got um, top of your wastegate and bottom of the wastegate. These ports may not, may not be pointing out the correct ones, but for the boost controllers, you've got uh, manifold, top of wastegate, and bottom of wastegate. Um, and that will, oh, and... Uh, I forget what the other one is, I'm sure. I have the directions for this one somewhere. Uh, I'll obviously find that and we'll go through the installation of this when it's time uh, on another video. Uh, it will be quite some time. But uh, yeah, I got tired of uh, not being able to adjust the boost on the fly. Um, I was running 15 PSI all the time, you know, because we like to party, obviously. But uh, yeah, there are some some instances where, you know, having all the power all the time isn't really necessary. Uh, you know, let's say you get caught out in the rain or something. Uh, but, you know, I'd like to run on 10 PSI most of the time. I think the wastegate has a spring for 7 PSI. 7 PSI just isn't enough, to be honest with you. But uh, probably run it around on 10 PSI um, and bump it up to 15 PSI uh, on pump gas. So for E85... You know, I don't know what I'll be running. Um, E85, can, you can run just about as much boost as you want to without a problem. Um, 
I seriously doubt that I'll be going over 20 PSI, but uh, it's good to know that this would have that ability to do so. So, you know, I can have, uh, I can have my pump gas um, boost level, and then I can switch it over to high boost for the E85 uh, if I so choose. And then the last thing we got here, um, our set of uh, roller lifters. So as, as I said earlier, uh, I lost a lot of stuff in my storage fire. Uh, I actually have, here we go. So this is the box of stuff that came out of the storage fire. So I've got uh, old nasty roller lifters here. I don't even have a full set of roller lifters. So um, uh, I might be able to salvage some of this stuff. I don't even know. But because I knew I didn't have a full set of lifters, I went ahead and uh, picked up a uh, another set of lifters. Um, locally now one of the things is that i've heard a lot of problems with the newer style lifters that have uh i think they're like one or two rings that go around right here and um, this part of the lifter extends almost all the way down to um to the roller i've heard a lot of people that have problems with those uh, lifters falling apart um being bad out of the box uh and they're You'll see them, the Ford Racing lifters, their uh, Earson lifters, almost everyone, uh, Melling, Sealed Power, almost everyone sells the same lifter in a different box. Uh, so uh, pretty much any lifter you get these days are an offshore lifter that's made. Uh, these are OEM lifters. I'm going to clean these up. I'll probably pull the, uh, if I can, I'll pull them apart and uh, get them cleaned up on the inside. If not, I'll just dunk them in some uh, some of uh, my carb dip and get them all cleaned out, shoot some brake cleaner through it, some carb cleaner through it, and make sure they're all nice and clean. I'll inspect them thoroughly, make sure we're good to go, and um, I'll reuse these. With uh, roller lifters, you can definitely reuse roller lifters on any what cam you want. Unlike flat tappet or hydraulic tappet, uh, standard non-roller camshafts where uh, you need to keep, if you if you purchase a used cam, you need to keep those lifters assigned to the same lobes they came out of. Uh, otherwise, you're going to have some problems with wear. So uh, with roller cams, since it's a roller bearing, there's no need to keep the lifters assigned to it, assigned to each cam. Uh, you can reuse old roller lifters on a new cam. Uh, you can use new roller lifters on a used cam. You can use used lifters on a used cam. It doesn't matter. So um, I'll get these all cleaned up. These are nice Ford lifters, which I've never had a problem with. Uh, so get them cleaned up, get them stabbed in, be good to go. All right, guys, that's it for today. So coming soon, we're going to be pushing the Mustang outside and get it cleaned up and prepared for the Scott Rod weld-in inner fender panels. I've also got the panels for welding over the strut tower braces. Still got to order the one for the firewall. That'll come in soon. But first up, got a power wash, get all that old years of grease and grime and dirt off of here so we can get started welding. All right, thanks for watching. Take care.